to now we talk black tax scenarios and we're zooming in on burial costs and how in most cases it is the one uh, who is employed who has to uh, really put things together. Things like funeral insurance cover and uh, grocery stock files are often used as a, a mitigation for one not to be heavily burdened uh, should someone die or when the festive season comes. But we speak now to the author of um, handle black tax like a pro. We are joined by Ndumi Hadebe, who is the author. Ndumi, a good morning to you. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Good morning, my lady. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is an interesting book and really something for us to think about on this Saturday morning because I think a lot of South Africans are watching this 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 conversation. And when you say black tax, we already start to, you know, your head starts to spin a little bit because you realize just how much you have to do for yep. how many uh, family members. But talk to me about why you felt it was important to write the book, Handle Black Tax Like a Pro. Well, my lady, it actually is interesting how the book came about because during COVID, I realized that we were keyboard warriors and we we're also vested in expressing our feelings and our thoughts on social media about black tax. But none of us were actually addressing the issue with our loved ones. And I felt that this was unfair because it's like, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we give our loved ones a right of reply? Get them to understand how we, what we think, what our questions are, but most importantly, what our frustrations are financially. We are so good at the PR exercise of looking like we've got money. Therefore, we invite people to ask us for money. And we get frustrated. So who's gaslighting who? Yeah. Ourselves. Yeah. And this is why I thought this book is greatly needed as a means of building society. Yeah. One of the things, though, that you do talk about is, is, is what happens, though, with... Um, you know, the loss of a family member. And I think about the funeral that we've been watching in BG as well. And, you know, how um, when you've lost five family members, that's a massive responsibility there mm -hmm. on what happens yeah. uh, with the burial, right? And, and, and a lot of the time the calls are made for community members to contribute. But can we talk about um, just burial and, and death in a family and that being a form of black tax and the great responsibility uh, that is seen within families where burials are concerned? Well, my lady, I think before we get to the responsibility of what the funeral entails, but let's look at how lavish we've made them to be. Mm. So the black tax currently is not even so much the actual responsibility of the funeral. It is more the perception that we've created that funerals must be lavish. They must be, uh, uh, we must just be giving this money uh, 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 every day leading up to the funeral, you know, like there's, we are hosting people, they are having not only tea now, they are having meals, right? So you're hosting families and relatives for the entire week. By the time you actually get to the funeral, the exorbitant fees that we are paying as black people specifically is incomparable to other races and other, and, and other people abroad. The way we go about it, it is so that it is expensive. Yet we are the ones complaining about it. Yet again, it's us that kind of invite the, the, the extra cost in my view. But coming back to the responsibility itself, it's, it's that we want to make it dignified. And that is, that is valid because we love our loved ones. But what if we look at loving our loved ones more, with money even, whilst they're still alive? If we wanted to actually maybe change the perception and say, we need to invest more in each other, not waste money on each other, spend money on each other, invest in each other, money ahead of time, like while I'm still alive, while I'm still here, what are my needs? If I'm writing a book, maybe somebody can sponsor me for, to have a writing coach, right? But when I'm gone, really the exorbitant fee doesn't really matter. And I'm not saying that in this particular case, that's what is, and that's what it is with everyone, but this is basically what I feel is adding. Yeah. M maybe 70% more of what needs to be paid. Mm. You know, I was uh, I'm looking here at uh, how funerals, uh, there's a, a, a piece that was written, it says funerals in South Africa can cost anywhere from a few thousand rand to 150,000 rand in some cases. I mean, that's big money 
uh, that's going into our funerals. But can we talk a little bit about when when the cycle actually ends? Because I think in a lot of families there's this understanding that, well, you know, as the generations get younger, there are those that perhaps have a responsibility of taking care of the elders and other family members. Um, but, but you know, when, when does the cycle and the responsibility in and of itself end? And you can talk to us about a few tips that you even put in the book on how to manage it if you're the one carrying that burden in the family. So the cycle doesn't end if we don't do anything different to change it, hence the book. So if we're not going to change the way we spend, if we're not going to learn about boundaries and actually understand that we have to we have to budget, we have to say no, we have to have a line item for black tax period. And where you say, I love you, lady, but as my sister, I cannot, I cannot get into debt um, to buy you a dress or to buy your hair mm. or, or something. Mm. And if I, if I have not built a healthy relationship with me saying no, I will always be struggling financially. That's one. And what that means is that by the time I am 60, 70, I will be my children's responsibility. So the cycle then does not end because we are not having the right conversations where we are saying this can no longer be the elephant in the room. We cannot be the elephant in the room when the stop orders are going off and the WhatsApps are coming through and the, the two, 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 you know, from FNB and the e-wallets. <laughs> then it's not an elephant in the room. Yeah. It's very much a reality for most of us. So why don't we talk about it? Mm. So how we actually potentially can end the cycle is by sitting down as families and have a proactive conversation. And where I can say, as in Dumi, I am in debt up to this level. I cannot afford even the car that I'm driving, perhaps, or I'm not, I'm not financially okay, and I need to do something about it. And we need to take ownership, my lady. We need to actually own that you and I like the feeling that feels when we help somebody. So we help them for ourselves. Mm. So when we own when we own that, then we can learn to understand that sometimes when you are over helping somebody, you are actually doing it at their detriment. Mm. And when we say, I need to be okay with delaying the gratification that comes with helping, it's, it's, it means you have to be the one that deals with that. You have to be the one that learns to say no, as difficult as it may feel and as horrible as it may feel, but the best thing is to do it rather now so that later you've got money, so that later your kids don't have to look after you because they're not likely to be there. That's mm. another thing, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, they'll be traveling. They'll be in China, in Korea, in, in Tokyo, doing whatever that uh, uh, Gen Zs do, right? So there is no guarantee that we will have someone black texting us, you and I, yeah. as a generation. So we are the generation that is actually meant to break the cycle because we've got access to real money and we've got access to make money in dollars. We can make money online, but we will not change the cycle if we do not change the way we relate with money and how, whether we talk about it with our families or not. Okay. Yeah, tell us, where do we get the book? Because I think that's uh, some really helpful tips there for many, many South Africans. So the book is at exclusives and on take a lot. And for bulk orders for corporate, uh, I am available on hello at ndumihadebe.co.za to take inquiries and orders. All right, thank you so much for that. Tindumi Hatebe there is the author of Handle Black Tax Like a Pro uh, speaking to us this morning. All right.